Hello. Hi, hi. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Me too, buddy. <clears throat> Another beautiful day <laughs> in planet Earth, they say. <laughs> How are you, everybody? How are you, Fernanda? Mexico City? Yes, Mexico City. <laughs> Good, welcome. Thank you. And Roxana, how are you? Are you in Bucharest? No, Constanza. It's the seaside of Romania. Constanza. And it's nighttime already? Mm -hmm. Cool. And what about you, Ben Albuquerque? Oh, yes nice all right welcome everybody thank you for joining this is the exciting session officially number 83 step by step we keep approaching to the 100th session but i was thinking the other day maybe we should aim for the 108 instead of the 100 make it well both of course but yeah let's see what happens i think we should organize something special ben Let's start cooking something in our minds. Thank you, everybody, then. Uh, let me introduce today's panelists for you. Today we have with us uh, the very well-known Ben Kramer, Professor Dr. Ben Kramer. He is <laughs> very often. Um, he's really, really involved in the whole um, organization of the Mixed Notes Reading Club translation team. And well, he has done so many things. He has done a three-year retreat, for example, which I find very meaningful. Um, he has done, so far that I know, one baby. <laughs> he, he also runs a, a yoga studio as well. He finished one book already, right? One of the translation books. And, and it's very, very good having you here. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. And then we have Roxana Barbu from uh, Romania. Uh, this is the second time you come, right? Thank you. Thank you for coming. And could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because uh, I remember last time you introduced yourself, but maybe there is many people who is new here. And maybe you can tell us a little bit like maybe, OK, how how did you start studying these topics? How long have you been doing? And I don't know, what currently are your daily life looks like? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I started officially, started studying, the, uh, studying this in um, the spring of 2020. I started with Lamrim 35th and then, uh, a teacher actually during that time my life completely changed right during the pandemic I guess a lot of people went through that um and then a teacher here in Romania was teaching an AC ACI course and I started studying that and it's been a non-stop study ever since I got involved in translation both written and uh, live translation um, and also involved in the club that raises money for the ALL, mm. which is challenging and fun sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, well, that's worth it. If it's fun sometimes, then it's good. Great, great, great. Thank you very much. And what are your plans? How long do you plan to keep going? So we reached the goal, right? Yes. Cheers. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome. And we also have Fernanda with us. She lives in Mexico City. Is this the first time you come to a reading club, Fernanda? Um, I I have been one time, but I think it was in Spanish. So ah, okay. I think it's first time in in English. <laughs> very welcome, very welcome. Fernanda has been involved in the mostly well in everything I think, but mostly when I think of you, I um, think of the DCI uh, wing of this whole machinery. 
So can you tell us a little bit of what, what have you been doing lately over there? And what are maybe a few things that you have in mind for the next few months to introduce yourself, I mean? <clears throat> okay, <laughs> great. Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I'm very happy to, to be here, to be uh, helping in one of Gesher Michael's projects, which is DCI for Mexico and Spanish. Uh, I have been translating mostly and promoting DCI events. Uh, I also helped uh, to translate uh, to ACI, YSI, and other organizations. And I found that I really like translation, uh, <laughs> live translation. I, I really enjoy it. So I'm very, very happy and grateful to be able to serve and help other others to have this wisdom more available and more easy to, to obtain. So I'm very happy and I, I hope I can continue helping and doing this and also promoting DCI events in Spanish speaking countries. <laughs> Thank you, Fernanda. Um, I think you, you did mention something interesting to me that I can use as a, as a hook to start with the conversation. You did say, uh, how much do you enjoy or the beautiful thing that it is to serve others? And today's topic is very related to that because today's topic is the benefits of bodhicitta. So now for, for maybe, I don't know if some of you maybe were not here last session, but the idea is that we're gonna be covering for a few sessions, a whole like theme related to bodhicitta, what it is, how to get it, what to do before once we, we have decided to get it. And basically maybe don't tell ACI, but what I'm doing is like taking the, the readings of uh, the course number 10, ACI course number 10. Um, now I'm just joking, of course, it, it's okay. But so first, first we, we went to basically the the i guess the definition in a way like what is bodhicitta okay people talk about it let's check what it is uh we we did it in a kind of a summary and then we also step into what do we need to do before getting it it's like i use the example we it's like we're gonna throw a party and then before the party we have to do a certain preliminaries like we got we have to clean which is something that the reading mentions very interesting they say before we achieve bodhicitta we have to clean ourselves we have to make ready we have to purify there is a big section on, on using the four powers and it goes very very deep in each one of the powers like in a depth that i didn't study before so i really recommend you any of you if you're really interested in these topics give yourself a chance and do the readings they are amazing it's like it's like um a great chance to go in depth and and they give you many more detail many more tools on each one of the steps that we may know already but it's it's great so we reached that part and now we are talking about um, what is it gonna do for us and not for us only really for everybody so this is what we are going to be talking here today. So I would like to ask you guys uh, how the first, just in general, what does this reading make you think about or how did you took it? What trigger in you? What were your general thoughts about it? And then from here, we can start moving forward. Who would like to start? If anybody already feels like um what about you Roxana I had a very good let me tell everybody I had very good um recommendations of Roxana in this topic from other people <laughs> so so that, that's very cool uh, maybe you have been studying some of these courses lately or um, for some reason your friends think you're a very good person to have here today could you share with us maybe your general thoughts about um, the benefits of bodhicitta and maybe if you feel like 
sharing in your life if you have seen personal experiences like uh, um, before and after of yourself once you start um, thinking or putting your mind around these topics have you seen any benefits in your personal life just by studying these things So first of all, my friends are very kind and they're very encouraging. I'm grateful for that. Um, what I was thinking when I was reading the reading um, is just how wonderful it is to want to take care of everyone, right? And you asked about a personal example and I have been through one of the biggest practices I have had in my life is my dance practice. And at one point I uh, left Romania and I went to a different country to study with a particular teacher, a dance teacher. And uh, in the beginning, I didn't have the highest of motivations when I was studying. I was studying for myself. I noticed that that practice could help me transform my mind. I noticed that my mind was messed up. But it was so different when I was practicing for myself. Um, actually, it was because, the, because of the kindness of my teachers, because I had two main teachers there, that I started to realize the responsibility I had towards everyone else. And in the particular dance that we study, we also have partner work, especially partner work classes. And in that practice, in the beginning, it was me with myself just thinking you're not doing this correctly your basic step is off you're rushing the aid again that doesn't have to make sense but at one point because of their methods which weren't always the not necessarily the not nicest they were very kind but they're disguised as being a little bit tougher and that whole thing just it shifted the way I was looking at everyone else. I started to become aware of the responsibility of taking that practice seriously and the fact that others would see you as an example. And even in the partner work practice that I was telling you about, there was a human being in front of me that I wasn't seeing for months, right? Everything that I was doing Usually they were scared of me. Whenever they had to dance with me, they were scared of me because I was so serious. But after that, it was so different. And I can vouch for the fact that doing the practice for everyone else completely changes you and completely changes your practice. I practiced for months thinking about just myself and my practice wasn't going anywhere. And when the motivation changed, when it became about everyone else, everything changed. And I do believe that it is something that everyone has to go through in order to actually feel it. But we do have these wonderful teachings that help us develop it and help us think about it and help us understand the benefits that we could have because of it, even though maybe we didn't get to it formally right yeah thank you roxana i think it's very very beautiful thank you for sharing thank you. and and i do in a way i do feel uh, i can relate a little bit to the story in my example i mean i i'm not gonna say like a particular example but i do have seen that many times um having this attitude is a great source of energy like a maybe general example like i and i tell the same last time like i could be just being lazy watching a movie all tired like a, i don't want to do anything just rest but then if somebody let's say if somebody that i like or i love or something calls me and they say hey please i need your help i got into a situation uh, this is this blah 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 I really need your help then I think because out of this love or liking the person or caring for this person like there is a new source of energy 
that I could be like, okay, good. Now I feel I have it's something, something happens inside of you. And in this regards, I would like to now ask Ben, Ben Kramer, um, what could you say about this? Like, of course we have studied a few times, like, okay, what's for the cheetah, general definition, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's say it's the wish, the wish to, well, let's say traditionally speaking, the wish to get enlightened, to be able to help everybody else. Uh, in a way I could say like, it's the wish to become the best version of ourselves to help somebody else. But now what I start thinking about this was, what is a wish? What is like, in, and now maybe thinking in, a little bit about that in a, in a, from a yoga perspective, a wish I think is like a certain form of energy, something happening because it's like yeah. in a way, in a, in a holy way, in a nice way, beautiful way, we want something. It's a form of, you know, it's a form of wanting. It's like a form of a wish. Yeah. How, how will you say, or what would you say is bodhicitta, but talking more like into a, why can we gain strength or power or how and, and again as well i will if you feel like if you can tell your own personal experience like if you have feel like working towards these topics have helped you to act differently in your daily life or if you have been able to gain motivation or strength to do things that maybe you will have not otherwise um yeah, there's a lot there. You uh, you gave me a lot, but um, uh, you, you know when what struck a chord with me when you tied it to yoga, and I think um, it's very much tied to to dance. Then also, right? These practices exist in um, in, in in classical teachings, in ancient philosophical teachings, and ancient teachings on uh, on bodhicitta and love, but they're usually secret. Um, the the practices of dance and um, and yoga like yoga asana and um, in the secret teachings you know there's this connection between the uh, the the wish and um, and wisdom and uh, and bliss uh, bliss like beautiful sensations in especially in our inner body in the central channel but um, but there's something about appreciating uh, beauty in ourselves and in others, like like finding what's delightful. And um, uh, I don't, I'm not. I danced a little bit. I was a terrible dancer, but I, uh, my my, you know, my wife made me do it for years. And um, you know, I did what like three years of ballet every day. And um, and uh, I, again, it, I was terrible, but, um, and now I don't do it anymore, but it, it was, it was, you know, connected to this feeling and connected to this feeling in yoga. And I have, you know, I teach yoga now and these yoga students, and if you find what's beautiful in the practice, right, if you appreciate the beauty in your practice, right, and then I want to tie it whatever to daily life, but if you appreciate like what feels beautiful in a yoga pose, or one of the things that's been hard for me that that was a gift from dance, and that I've tried to take into yoga, it's hard for me as a man, whatever, maybe just because of the way I was raised as a man in society, it's hard for me to, to accept feeling graceful. Sometimes it's hard for me to, to connect with that. But what I find is like, the incredible sensations that happen for me physically in a yoga pose, right? Or when I'm moving, the, the movement of the winds, uh, when I feel a sense of grace, when I feel a sense of like elegance in my, in my shape, in my form, in my movement, there's this soaring sensation that happens. And when I can sink into that feeling and feel the, the beauty in movement in my body, um, I'm attracted to the practice. You see, I just, you just want to do it more. If you look around in yoga and you're constantly grunting at every yoga pose you do and fighting tooth and nail, as I have done, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm an expert in that too. Uh, but, um, but it can be discouraging. Whereas when you find the beauty, like, like the, the nay, the, the point where the marma, the spot where it feels most beautiful in each pose and you sink into those sensations, you develop this 
attraction for the practice that uh, that is probably the most powerful way to excel at any practice that you do because you will come to desire the practice. You will develop this love, this passion for the practice. So how does that apply to the wish as we think of it, as we understand it? You know, there's something about noticing the beauty in in humanity, noticing the beauty, the beauty in people, right? There's plenty to complain about and people love to complain. And, and it's not like I never complain, but but if you sit and you notice the beauty in people, if you just sit and it's just, it's kind of a choice, you know, I have infinite bad qualities and I have infinite good qualities. I do. If, if, you know, you guys take turns, you know, uh, coming up, one person comes up with a bad quality of Ben and one person comes up with a good quality of Ben and, and we just take turns, we would just run out of time. I mean, it's not, we wouldn't run out of qualities. So so which one am I really? You see, if you could go on forever naming qualities, then then what is Ben? Is he a good guy or a bad guy? It ain't like that. But if you spend all day thinking about my good qualities, well, you're going to be helpless, but to think I'm I'm all right, uh, or or you're going to start to think the people around you are wonderful as you as you lean on their good qualities. You're going to develop this attraction for caring for people, this delight in the people around you as you sit and and think of their good qualities and 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 by the way it's it it is it's yours too you know and think about the good that's a very beautiful thing too it is all beings right it's not just the wish for others it's the wish to achieve enlightenment ourselves and this lit i mean this book the a reading you've given us is a list of things for me that i can have if i serve others so it is about this uh, union of, of self and other that I think is, is uh, often overlooked, right? That we have a tendency to forget one side or the other, to focus on one side or the other, to be selfish to the exclusion of others, or to serve others to the exclusion of ourselves, right? To take care of yourself, especially if you're a person who serves others, right? Your care, your self-care is some of the highest service you can do if you're a person who serves others. We, you have something so precious in your hands as a person who serves others, you know, please uh, uh, nurture it. And I think, and I, I, you know, I don't want to go on too long, but, um, but I think there's something profound and I have to think about it too. And I, I hope we can all think about it too, about a misunderstanding between the difference between self and other, a misunderstanding about the division between who you are and who I am. And then when that division, when that false division is broken free, then, then the love can flow everywhere, you see? And as long as that division's there, then there are all sorts of places where the love stops, you know? Stops on my side, stops on your side. The, the waves of love are bouncing against false barriers that can't quite reach one another. But I think in the state of the wish, and I think this is tied to both forms of the wish, even in the form of love, in the form of wisdom. You see, in a state of true wisdom, I think all barriers are removed. And, and when love touches everything, you see, and you have that thrill uh, in your daily activity, um, and then these barriers are removed. And uh, and you have a freedom to act in love and delight that uh, perhaps can't come any other way. Thank you, Ben. So, will you will you recommend people to get it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, sure. I I mean that is it seems seems like a good it's it's lovely. It's I mean we all have little tastes. I can't. I can't claim to have the the wish with a capital W, but but in those moments where you, there are different kinds of love. There's this like whatever looking out for myself where I feel like I'm looking out for myself and I feel like aggrieved or indignant or like people need to understand I'm really like this and you just don't get me and blah blah. And then there are these moments of like longing or love for other people. Oh, I just wish they would understand me. Or and then there are these moments of like loving being together with our friends and and sharing in conversations where we just all feel elevated and i just 
I can only guess, you see, that it's something more like that. When I, on those occasions, when I feel something more like that, that my love for you elevates my love for me, elevates my love for you, elevates my love for me. And, uh, and I, I can't speak to the, the mind of the Buddhas, but, but it, when they say that somehow that is the engine that powers us to enlightenment, well, I can't say I find that hard to believe. Thank you, Ben. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I don't know if any, well, let me also encourage people. If you want to ask questions in the chat or participate, you can do and we will find some time to, to address those things as well. But listening to you, Ben, this idea came to me, something that I often think about, like different emotions, um, including, for example, the wish or love. Sometimes I think of them as substances in the body, like substances that trigger certain things. And I really do find very interesting, for example, the relationship between our emotions and our physical constitution, either our posture, even the tone of voice, how, I don't know, I like to say how um, happiness makes our body move and stretches this part, or anger makes this move. It's like a very interesting uh, connection. So, Something that I have noticed is that sometimes when I develop certain qualities, either I can be proud about them and look, I mean, it's, it's almost like a confession. And I sometimes, not that I want, but my tendency, like I look others that don't have those qualities with up, like upset and with disgust, like how is this people so irresponsible, let's say, ah, like this person thinks they know and they don't know anything. Like a lot of those things could happen in my mind, judgment. But then if I add this love that I think is something similar to what you were talking about, I could see exact same thing, but with a very different attitude. I could feel, mm, I don't know even how to explain it, but I could be like, oh man, I'm, I'm, I almost feel sad that they don't have the quality because I can see that it's creating them problems or or i you know like it's just a, a very different mm, glasses to look at the world to look at the same situation once you put sparklings of love that you want them to be happy it's almost like if you have love it's really difficult to get upset with anybody it doesn't matter what they do to you um so so for sure it's like something having love in our heart something that will change the whole perspective of our world like even those people that could be behaving in a negative way that we don't like or that we will not recommend in general who knows what they are doing really but but it's a different totally different taste once we are thinking um, i wish you happiness that in a way they say it's a definition for love right I want you to be happy. I like to, to think. Can I just say to, to Carmen in the chat, um, I was trying to type, but I'm a lousy yeah. typist, you know, but she talked about um, it can be scary, you know, like it can be scary to, to love people. And that's, and I, I just, I, I, I just, I believe it's fine. You know, like it's really, it's okay to be afraid. And I, right. I've got a six-year-old and I'm learning so many things by trying to teach a six-year-old how to be, you know, a, a human, uh, like I know, you know, I don't, I don't know either, you know, but, uh, but it's okay. Um, you know, one of the things, and he has a lot of fear and of course I have a lot of fear and I, I, you know, we all do and it's, it's okay. And, and, um, and, you know, he's learning about what it's like to be brave, you know, and he's also tried trying to learn to be a, you know, whatever a boy and boys are tough in school and I want him to be a tender boy, you know, but also like there's all this pressure on him to be strong and be brave. And, and um, what I've, what I've, you know, tried to teach him, not because I totally understand, but because I, you know, you try to say the smart, you try to say the smartest things you can to your kids, even if you're not totally there yet, you know, but, but I try to tell him like um, he uh, you know, being brave means doing things when we're scared. It doesn't mean not being scared. Not being scared is, is dumb. 
there's scary stuff out there. You know, people who aren't scared of, of tigers get eaten by tigers, you know, be, be scared. Yes. Be scared. There's stuff to be scared of. And then bravery is, um, is, is doing things even though we're scared and, and the risk that bravery and loving, um, it's okay, you know, and I, I think that if you want, also, if you want to have a strong heart, you know, then you kind of have to, you got to put it out there. If you hide your heart away, it can never be strong. But if you, you kind of like, as we say in America, sometimes you wear your heart on your sleeve. I don't know what the hell that means, but we say that we wear your heart on your sleeve, you know, like, like wearing it on the outside of your chest, you know, putting it out there. Um, it builds a strong heart. Um, and, you know, be smart and be responsible, you know, but to love, to love, um, sometimes it'll be sad, you know, sometimes it'll be sad. I work, you know, I work in a business. I work in a, right, this yoga studio. Yoga studio, it's a, it's a weird business because it's business and you have business relationships with people. And it's also like, I, you know, I believe that we're in the business of love in some way. It's it's yoga. It's about joining your mind. It's about union, joining the mind with with love, with the highest object. And, and so it's, you know, I could draw a line there and be like, this is a business relationship and we need to be serious about, you know, but I don't want, I don't want that. I, that's not why I got a yoga studio. I want to be loving with people. And, and sometimes business relationships fall apart and it's more painful because we've built loving relationships with those people. But, um, you know, I almost said a bad word, but, uh, you know, to heck with it. It's okay. I'm gonna, it, it's, that's who I want to be. I would rather be full of love and sometimes get my feelings hurt, you know, I mean, be safe, you know, and I, I, you know, be safe for yourself. Always be safe, right? Practically be safe, but like to put your heart out there and accept that like, sometimes our feelings are going to get hurt, but I'm going to know love. I'm going to know love and I'm going to know love deeply. Uh, I, I think it, I think it pays off. I do. I do. I think so. And yeah, sometimes we'll get hurt. It's okay. It's okay. I'm with you. It's okay to be scared. We, you got friends. We're here. Uh, I got your back. You got my back. It's okay. Thank you, Thank you Ben. I thought you were done. Sorry. If you want to... No, no, no. I, I'm done. Sorry. No, no, no. Great. Thank you. It's great <laughs> having you here. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it just reminds me about something that the reading says. In a way, the reading says that one of the benefits of bodhicitta, the wish, is that it's going to develop every quality. And, and I start thinking about, you say you want your, your child to be tender. And at the same time, I, I mean, maybe you didn't say this, but, but this is what I went through. At the same time, um, be strong and... And I think those two qualities, let's say, even I would say even being tough under certain circumstances and being tender, when they are qualities, they can coexist perfectly in the mind of someone who, you know, like eventually what I'm saying is like, eventually we are going to have, if we keep training, what, what I understand is we're going to have every single quality and we're going to be loving enough to be tender and, and loving enough to be tough and strong and, and wise enough to know when to choose to be and how to choose to be. So it's, it's like one of the benefits of caring for others. Apparently, we're going to start like uh, developing many faces, maybe many personalities, almost, I will say. And we're going to use each one of them as a tool, depending like what is being presented to us um i mean that's in a way that's how i visualize enlightened beings like they can be anything at any particular moment in order to serve somebody else and in this regard now i would like to ask fernanda how for you this being being around these teachings chewing on them has impact your daily life. Can you see a clear before and after once you start studying these teachings? Now you may have like at least, I don't really know, but I think at least you may have like five, six years studying these things, maybe even longer. Uh, could you share with us like uh, 
either an example of what you feel has happened to you or, or maybe how this general topic strikes you, what does it makes you feel once you read uh, about them. But in this case, the benefits of bodhicitta. Um, well, it defi definitely have changed my life in a lot of ways, right? Because even when when you're getting angry, you think of the pen and you think of, <laughs> if I don't want to plant more this anymore. So it's like a mind changing that doesn't allow you to behave the same. <laughs> Um, even when you, you when you're angry or you want to uh, something comes and it's like <laughs> don't do it don't plan to the scene <laughs> so I think it has changed a lot and in with bodhicitta um, I think uh, sometimes uh, maybe at the beginning when we start studying maybe we see it like really far like really difficult to achieve like how am I going to save all living beings? How how my actions and my words and thoughts are going to are going to get there? Like so, so I think sometimes we see it like really, really far away or really difficult to achieve. But I have also realized that we can try to develop the wish, like like fake it till you make it. Like even in small actions, we can try to put at the end of every action or or every emotion or intention like uh, for all living beings and even if i'm just helping one person on or if i'm just i don't know uh, doing something for my own health i think putting this intention or emotion it changes completely like whatever we're doing and it's not easy always to remember i think um sometimes for me, for example, sometimes I, I don't recognize and, and what I do, my actions, but my friends help me. Like, you're doing this that helps uh, um, other people and that helps me to, to remind like, okay, maybe it's a little action. Maybe it's something very, very small. But if we try to remember the most important goal is to develop this wish and here in the reading it says i i really like it because it mentions the benefits that it can smash all the bad deeds that it can change your even change your body but it also says it's difficult and you should never give up we we need to hold the wish and as firmly as you can and don't give up um so I, I, I think it's not, it's not, we need to remind ourselves to, to have the wish, to try to develop the wish and try to do it uh, little by little. In every action, in every thought, we can try to change our motivation. <laughs> Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you for sharing. And it just made me thought as again, like how, um well i have heard sometimes that the the wish for enlightenment can be in a way can be related as renunciation but just instead of only aiming towards you you do to everybody else and sometimes i can use that as a as a motivation like i see other people having a bad time i am having a bad time and then I, you know, I feel like disgust about it. Like, it's not fair. Like, I cannot allow this situation anymore. Like, you know, it's like I almost used um, this form of dislike. Like, I dislike this suffering so much that, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake 30 minutes earlier tomorrow to do a little bit more tomorrow. Um, it's like, it's like almost, as you say, it is difficult, but in a way, life is difficult already. So that level of insatisfaction or difficulty, I really think it can be used as a gasoline or, or power to, to keep us going because it's like, yes, it's difficult to love, but it's worse not to love, you know? The problems that come from 
from not loving, from not understanding, just from regular life are so unpleasant that I can sometimes find the motivation to just keep going because of the, the unpleasant of the, the current life. So yeah, I, I agree with you in the sense of it is difficult, it is difficult and it requires some efforts. Um, it's interesting because later we're gonna talk about the different perfections. And I just recently was listening about the joyful effort or the, like this attitude of uh, finding joy, doing good things for others, including yourself, as Ben was saying, like we are doing it for everybody for everybody, including ourselves. It's very interesting, this match. I think Ben was taking it to the, to me, it was something connected with love and wisdom, share a lot of interesting qualities, like removing the boundaries of separation in a way. It's interesting to think, if you think that the, through the central channel, uh, thoughts or energies of love and energies of wisdom run there, it, it may be a very interesting merge there. So what I would like to propose next is uh, we are not going to be able to go through the whole reading. It's long. But what if we just read the, the, the root text written by Master Shantideva? It's like a poem almost. We can go there, see what we get out of it, and maybe leave the last something, five minutes, if there is questions, or we, we talk a little bit more. I'm going to share with you the reading in the screen. Uh -huh. wait, 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 wait. Uh, almost. One, here it is. Okay. Uh, what if you, Fernanda, read the first, I don't know, three or four paragraphs, but we are only going to do the, the bold letters or the root text. And I, of course, encourage the audience, if you want to go deeper, give yourself and, and read what Gail Xavier, maybe somebody worth it of checking out has to say about their, each paragraph. But for now, we just go for the bolts. OK. What, what kind of goodness could there ever be other than the wish for total enlightenment that could overwhelm those negative deeds or dreadful and not some strength? Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Let's do like four or five. OK. The lords among victors contemplated the question for many millions of years and saw that this alone could be of benefit. It is this wish which, which allows a limitless mass of sentient kind of to attain the highest form of happiness with ease. And I would like here, I really would like to add this, this is something that the commentary says. What person with any intelligence at all will lose heart in going easily to ease? <laughs> I love that phrase. <laughs> because it's just what you were saying, Fernanda, that sometimes it's very difficult. But apparently, there are ways to make it easy to go easily to ease. We will talk about that in a moment. But maybe one more. Those who hope to smash the thousand pains of the cycle of life or to solve the unhappiness of every living being or bring them to the many thousand forms of happiness must never give up this very wish for enlightenment. Okay. Does any of you have any idea or would like to say something regards why, why can we say that this wish um, takes away the unhappiness of every living being. Why is it that developing this wish is gonna 
create this wonderful reality where we ourselves and everybody else is free of pain. Do you have any idea how this may work or any question that maybe we all together can figure it out? Why is it like, if let's say I don't know anything about this topic and I say, wait, 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 why do you say that developing this wish is gonna help everybody? Like, how does that work? Do you, any of you have any idea you wanna share or a question that you want to share? You know, there, it seems like there's like a few levels you can go and you can be, um, there's obvious, uh, there's hard, there's really hard. I mean, and, and, and maybe a bunch come up in between, you know, but the three that come up to me and I, I don't know what order to do those in. Um, but, uh, but I guess, um, obvious is when you have the wish, you, you try to make people happy. Right. I mean, that's easy right? Uh, it helps people because you try to help people when you have the wish because you thrive in seeing people happy. And so you're trying to serve them. Um, slightly harder is, uh, yeah, but I don't even know how to be happy myself. So how am I going to help them be happy? And, um, and that's what the wish is. The wish is the desire to achieve that state. Um, we had a Boy, I, I, yeah, I, um, I taught at the first DCI event ever in Detroit, um, whatever, back in, uh, 1904 or whatever it was. Um, and, uh, this question came up, we were teaching, uh, Dong Len giving and taking, right. Um, this practice of imagining yourself taking away the pain of other beings, uh, does it help the other person? And I've had weird stuff happen. You know, I've had like, I don't know, felt like magical stuff happen. I'm not claiming any magic. I don't know anything. I, you know, I still, whatever, just like I still have ignorance, I still believe in coincidences. I feel like that sometimes, you know, but I, I've had moments where I like sat and I meditated on someone. I did Tong Len on them. And then I just like, like they called me in the next moment or they like, you know, spotted me from far away and walked to me, you know, and, and I don't know, I'm not saying it means anything. I'm not claiming magical things. I don't know. Okay. But plenty it, stuff happens. Okay. But how does it affect that other person? Right. How does that affect that other person? Right. And the wish to get enlightened, the wish to, to figure it out here we are, whatever, we're trying to share advice with one another, but like, I'm still struggling. I don't know. You know, I mean, one of the one of the advices I better give you early on is, is, you know, take my advice carefully, you know, take my advice with a grain of salt. Right. Uh, again, I don't know what the hell that means, but that's another thing we say in America. Um, and, uh, uh, it means be suspicious of my advice, um, because I'm, I'm struggling too. Uh, but, but if it gets you to the goal faster, you see, if it gets you to the goal faster, um, the goal is someplace where you can help. If you get yourself out of pain, then you can help. You see, then you can really help people and this gets you there faster. Okay. And then there's really hard. Uh, and this, I don't know, right. This is like, this is more of a, like a brain breaker. Okay. And I, I don't, um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm afraid to say, uh, cause I, I don't want you to get weird, but, but but here we are, we're playing about this difference between self and other, and it's very difficult, right? So like, who is, who is Ben, right? Who, who am I, right? And I, you know, I happen to see like, you know, at least three other people here nodding and looking at me in the screen, you know, different expressions on your faces. And, uh, and so am I the way, you know, Juan sees me? Am I the way Roxana sees me? Am I the way Fernanda sees me, right? Um, Am I the way I see me? You see who who's right, and um, and it's easy to say, oh, Ben's right. You know, Ben's version is the most right because I see my own head. But I don't know. You know, anyone who's married out there, you know, uh, like I'm wrong about myself all the time, and she points it out to me. You know, God bless her. <laughs> you know, I'll say, oh, you know, I'm I'm this sort of a guy, and she'll say, yeah, really, because you know, I couldn't help but notice you this and this and this. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. Um, so who's right? Like, who's the real? Who's the real Ben? You see, who's the real Ben 
uh, beyond all perspectives. Who's got the one perspective on Ben that's not affected by the shape of your own heart? You see, by the shape of your own seeds, the shape of your own mind. Who's got that one perspective? There isn't, there isn't one. That's emptiness. That's the emptiness of Ben. There's no such perspective on Ben that is the one correct perspective on Ben. No such thing. Now, how do you see people as you change the shape of your heart? As you come to delight in people more and more, as you craft your heart in the shape of love, they look more and more loving to you. Are they? Are they? Does that make them more loving? You see? When I say there's no final Ben beyond all perspective, am I saying that I don't exist? No, that's stupid. You know, I mean, it's, I'm right here. I'm, of course I exist. Don't tell me I don't exist. That's, that's, that's nonsense. I'm right here. Of course I exist. But, but is there a real Ben that's separate from the way that you see Ben? No, no, not like that either. But so does that mean that Ben just lives in my heart? I don't live, I'm not inside your body. I'm not inside your brain. I'm my own person. And, and, and we can all share love and wisdom together. And, and, and we do, and we can have conversations together and we do. And in that sense, I'm real. And, and yet you will be helpless, but to see the Ben that your heart uh, sets forth. You will be helpless but to see me uh, in the form that the shape of your heart allows by the way you have made the shape of your heart. And if you forge your heart in love, you will come to see more and more love around you. Does that mean that you are skewing the real Ben into the shape of a more loving Ben? No, I ain't like that. Does that mean that now everyone sees Ben that way? No, it doesn't mean that either. You know, uh, but some people I'm sure think I'm a real jerk. Sorry, you know, uh, they do. And they're right for them. They're right for them. And uh, and my feelings about myself are, are complicated. Depends on when you catch me. <laughs> some days I'm happy with myself. Some days I'm frustrated. Who's the real Ben? If you know that, if you know that there's not a real Ben, not that there's no Ben, that's dumb. I'm right here. Don't tell me I don't exist. It hurts my feelings, right? I'm right here. You see? Uh, but if there's no real Ben that transcends, that goes beyond everyone's perspective of Ben, then I ask you this. Does having love in your heart change the only Ben that you will ever meet? I think so. I think so. I think so. But don't get weird. You can get weird. You can take that and get weird. You yeah. see? But don't get weird. I'm right here. I still like, I still need a paycheck. I still want you to come to the Mixed Nuts Reading Club. I don't, I don't only live in your mind. I also live in my mind. I also live in other people's minds. We all got to look out for each other. Uh, don't get weird. You know, there's still, there's work to do. There's obvious work to do. There's hard work to do. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's, there's a way in which I do live in your heart. There's a way in which I do. It seems that those are very complex projections. Yeah. Very complex, interesting technology. <laughs> so I was just thinking what you were saying. I, I thought, okay, if it's true that I cannot point at anything, that doesn't come from my seats. You know, mm -hmm. the game point of something, okay? If that is true, then who other than myself is gonna save this world? My world. Like, who's gonna save the world? Do you know? Like, if we just ask that, and, and no wonder, I think now, no wonder why one of the steps to develop bodhicitta is a personal responsibility. Um, and in that sense, maybe it's one of the ways that the wish for enlightenment is going to save the world. Because who else is going to do it? Like, I mean, you have to do it. I have to do it, you know. 
And if, if you don't have the wish for alignment, probably that's not going to happen. It's interesting. Is it true? Is it true that nobody else is going to come and save my world? Do I have to do it? And if so, how? Or maybe somebody else is going to come, but how are they going to come? Thinking about seats, right? Well, you know, Carmen mentioned God in the in the chat, and I think that it, it's like it's important to say, like we talk about a guru or we talk about people outside of us. Like, yeah, okay, on some level, you have to help yourself, you have to save yourself. That's true. On some level, that's true. But it's not like also it would be ridiculous to say that we don't meet people or beings that know things that we don't know that help us in ways that we don't expect. It, it would be absurd to say that we meet beautiful people we have incredible friendships and like what what's the limit like how great a being could there be that could come and help me and guide me right to come to the place where i can fill my heart of love i have no idea what the limit is you know god could be a great word for that i i don't know it, and uh and so i don't think you know i think a lot of people think of those things in conflict and i think people draw a lot of conflict between, you know, like God or Buddhism or all these, yeah, God is love says Carmen. That's beautiful, Carmen. Yeah. Or Gandhiji said once, uh, my, my uniform con uh, experience has convinced me that there is no other God than truth. Mm -hmm. um, so is God truth or is God love or are those not really different things? Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's beautiful to wonder about these things and, and yeah, and to pray you know, to pray for this to come to me, whatever that means to you, you know, and I know prayer is a complicated word and, but just thinking to yourself, maybe you're praying to yourself. I don't know. I don't know. You see, uh, I hope it gets better. I hope I get better. I hope that I remember love today is remembering love, longing for love, longing for love, wishing, oh, I wish I thought of love more is a thought of love. Oh, I struggle. Not enough of the time of day. Not enough of the day is my heart on love. Oh, how I long for love. And I'm so sad that my mind isn't on love more. Is like this love for love. You're there, you know. It's there. Just that thought is so powerful. It is so beautiful. It is. Thank you, Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we still have two minutes, and just because the next two verses are very beautiful, all of them are beautiful, but let's just do two more, and maybe just final final words, if anybody wants to add or say anything, but let me share once again the reading, and and do that, those. Um, let me, okay, share the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we did this. Would you, Roxana, read, please? Sure. <laughs> Once they've succeeded in developing the wish for enlightenment, then even those miserable beings chained in the prison of cyclic life are in an instant referred to by those gone to bliss as their own daughters or sons and are worthy to be bowed to by the entire world of men and gods. And Keep, this this, sorry. <laughs> Keep this thing called the wish for enlightenment as firmly as you can, for like the highest form of alchemical elixir, it transforms the, this filthy body you've taken to the holy form of a victorious one, of immeas immeasurable value beyond all value. Yay. And maybe one last one. Those who seek to be free of the state of living beings should keep well and firm this precious jewel the wish for enlightenment for that single captain of living kind has searched at length with a state of mind beyond all limit and found it to be of great value. Thank you. Thank you so much. And he, this is a beautiful part of the reading where 
there are like many examples or analogies, metaphors for the wish for enlightenment and how it acts on us. So yeah, I recommend people to read it. And does anybody else would like to add anything, any final like words, maybe a, um, maybe a, a few personal advice or practice that has helped you to understand better or to behave in a better way, to be more loving, something that you will like just give your final words to the audience, uh, maybe with like your personal one little advice on how can we, in your opinion, how could we um, live in this way a little bit more? I already I talked about you guys have to talk. Good, please. No, <laughs> I have actually loved how much Ben has brought into discussion, into this discussion today. The fact that the, not the difference, but the, how important it is to think of me and other, right? And there, it, it is fascinating that there is a specific meta, method to develop bodhicitta that focuses on this, right? On extending the borders of me and including the other one. And it starts with seeing the other person as being equal as you, right? E having equal rights. Remember Geshe translates it like that and he hates equal equalizing or whatever it's translated in other parts. To actually want people to be happy and not feel pain. And then to actually exchange yourself with the other person and try to do exactly that. Try to make sure that whatever you are doing, whatever you're saying, whatever you're thinking, which is probably the hardest, is not causing them pain and is bringing them happiness. I think that this whole me and other thing is something worthy of studying and just meditating upon. Thank you, Roxana. For me, <laughs> the way I interpret what you say it's like, I feel you just told me, don't judge other people because then I'm hurting them in my mind. Uh, and you did mention the way you think about others. That, that's cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody else would like to say just whatever? You want to give me an advice as Roxana did? Well, I think um, maybe at the beginning, it's not so easy to feel this love for all living beings but as we start to read and have more comprehension of, of the text I think the heart starts to soften and I don't know like we start to feel more this love so uh, as Ben said in the chat like wishing to have the wish like you maybe you don't, you don't have the wish but you wish to have it so it's starting in something right <laughs> so it's better <laughs> to start <laughs> Cool. And if I may, what I take from your words is keep studying. <laughs> so I'll keep studying as well. And what about you, Ben? Little love is the seed for big love. Little love. Uh, just a little bit of a leaning towards little love. The uh, opening words of the maybe the greatest book on wisdom that Jetson Kappa recommended, which is Entering the Middle Way uh, by um, Chandra Kirti. Um, starts by bowing down to little love. And there are all these descriptions about um, the sacredness, like Bodhi, uh, bodhisattvas, they don't need you to bow to them. They're good. They're hooked up, right? Buddhas, they don't need your prayers. They're fine. You see, it's that little bit of love, you know, in, in someone's heart, right? Who's like afraid to love. They're not sure if they could love. And they're just like today, they're like, I'm going to try to love a little. That's precious. That needs your support. You see, uh, um, Kidrip Tempadarge in his commentary uh, says it's like a little baby plant, like a little ba baby, uh, he said medicinal plant, like a little, little tiny little sprout that you have to like really take care of it. You know, it's vulnerable, right? Not like an oak tree can be knocked over. Um, uh, Master Chandrakirti says, uh, 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 listeners and self-made Buddhas come from Buddhas. Buddhas come from bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas uh, 
take their holy birth from um, great compassion, the mind that transcends duality, and the wish to achieve enlightenment. And so, in the beginning, I sing the praises of compassion. For love, and only love, was said to be like the seed for all the excellent crops of the victors, like the water that makes them grow, like the years of ripening it takes for them to become a thing we can partake of. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Seeds grow. <clears throat> so little love creates big love. That's all it takes. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having come today. Thank you, Roxana. Thank you, Fernanda. Thank you, Ben. It's wonderful having you, all of you here. Thank you for all the translators, all the um, people recording, everybody who gives themselves the time to come and attend and, and listen to this program. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very valuable. And especially thank you to all of you who, who try to practice these beautiful teachings that I really believe really have the potential to make a better world for everybody. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for supporting this beautiful little community. Thank you. I appreciate it. And if you want to support this little beautiful community as well, <laughs> uh, we really appreciate if you your donations. I'm going to share the link in the chat. If anytime you feel like supporting these, whatever you can is great. Uh, I remember Maria Kondratieva once say, or Peter, I don't remember. They say, no, 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 not whatever you can. Give a good effort. But of course, it's just a funny way to say, please help if you can. It's really, really useful. Uh, remember, it's not only this program, but the whole translations that are happening these days are being supported with this. Thank you so much. We will see again next Thursday. It's going to be at evening time, Arizona time. And yeah, we will keep switching morning and evenings. Thank you. Hope you have a great, 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 great week and everything. Month, year, life, rest of time. <laughs> see some other time. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.